Our next guest says these latest uh, tariff moves will take the situation from bad to worse. Joining us on the phone, Stephen Roach, former Morgan Stanley Asia chairman and current Yale University senior fellow. Uh, Stephen, it's good to have you back. Good to be with you, Carl. What do you make of this argument that uh, if you were going to do this, you'd probably choose about now in which to tackle some of these long-term structural trade imbalances? I think it's dead wrong, uh, Carl, because the, um, the trade um, uh, issues do not occur in a vacuum for a saving short U.S. economy. We have an extremely low domestic savings rate, 1.5% of national income in early 2018. And so lacking in saving and wanting to grow, we uh, import surplus savings from abroad. We run trade deficits of, uh, with 102 countries last year to attract the capital. We're going after the biggest piece of our uh, uh, trade deficit. But, you know, this problem is going to go from bad to worse because of the budget deficits you guys were just talking about. So our domestic saving is going to get lower, and uh, our need for surplus savings from abroad will only grow. And so the irony is, unfortunately, that we're turning protectionists just at a time when we're going to need more surplus savings, more trade deficits from abroad. I see today Norway became the sixth WTO member to challenge uh, our steel and aluminum tariffs. Anyone going to join us in this party? Is there any semblance of unity going up against China's trade? No, I think we stand alone here in um, trying to make America great again by biting the hand that feeds us. And I think um, you know, the, uh, President Trump is, is clearly uh, using uh, what he perceives to be a lot of uh, political capital to address uh, uh, economic issues that uh, continue to afflict uh, the middle class, ironically, at a time when the national unemployment rate is down to 3.8 percent. So I think, you know, we, we are alone in, in really our misguided uh, application Re of economic Really, policy. Stephen? I mean, Europe, I know right now President Trump isn't popular with European leaders, so they don't want it to be seen as being on the same bandwagon, but they had already imposed tariffs on steel. They had already started to do lots more restrictions on Chinese purchases of European companies. I mean, they were almost ahead of us in some ways, and the world didn't seem to fall apart, and nobody was jumping up and down and screaming that they were protectionists. I don't think they're gone. They, they, they're, they're doing that at all, Michelle. I think, uh, you know, we are um, very aggressive in um, uh, utilizing the so-called Section 301 investigation to allege uh, uh, nefarious practices of, uh, uh, of uh, forced technology transfer, and then when China retaliates, as you would expect, you know, any trading partner to do when they're singled out, then you know we have a leader who says, you know, how dare they retaliate? You know, uh, we're going to up the ante by first he said another hundred, now he says two hundred. Who knows what he'll say tomorrow? Yeah. All right. Well. The first technology transfers are, are, are a, a reality, though, Stephen. You know, given all the years you've spent studying China there, what are your expectations for what they can do beyond, obviously, just tariffs themselves? Do you really think that the idea of boycotts, for example, that's been introduced, or other regulatory impediments they can put up, what are your expectations for their response? I think they'll respond in time, in kind, excuse me, and, and I think... Uh, you know, it'll, it'll be tit for tat. When, when they are threatened uh, by uh, the United States, uh, they have their own uh, sort of political um, uh, view to defend as well to their domestic uh, leadership uh, and, uh, and public. And just like uh, our own president can't back down to his base, Xi Jinping uh, has a base that he also must be are responsive to both within the party and uh, within the general public. Nationalism is very strong on both sides of this battle. Finally, Stephen, um, no one's really talking about you know, GDP impact. I see Atlanta Fed still has Q2 tracking at 4.7. I mean, do you think we'd feel any of this pain anytime soon? No, no. I mean, these are, these are trivial amounts uh, uh, at this point in time. I mean, if you look at these globally, you know, in, in a... Uh, uh, world economy that's 75 to 80 trillion dollars. I mean, uh, even even if the um, the tariffs go up to say 250 billion on both sides uh, of the U.S.-China uh, trade flows, you know, so make it 500 billion. You know, that's you know a measly six tenths of a point. 
of uh, world GDP, 2.5% of world exports. These are not big numbers. The problem is what comes next. Uh, and what this uh, is signifies in terms of a, a world that has benefited a lot uh, from trade uh, uh, liberalization and globalization to reduce the prices of goods purchased by uh, consumers. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.